So today we are talking about the, the attitude of mindfulness that is patience. And I see patience as a, a very relevant thing to focus on in the modern world because there's generally a lot of pressure to get more things done in a shorter amount of time. And it really breeds a connection to impatience that we're always trying to be as efficient as possible and any little roadblock that can get in our way of that efficiency brings us right into that experience of being impatient. So our meditation practice becomes this time where we get to recalibrate our relationship with speed and with being able to wait for things sometimes, right? Not everything is ready on our timeline exactly when we want it or need it. So patience is this thing that can be very helpful in all sorts of situations in day-to-day -day life but also with ourselves. I see this a lot where when people first start practicing yoga or meditation and they might think, well, I've, I've been practicing a month or you know a year or something. I should be able to do all of these different things. I should have such deep focus within myself at this point. So there's this expectation and if we don't meet our own personal expectation, there can be an impatience with our own progress. So there's a couple different ways where we can look at our relationship with patience, but definitely being patient with ourselves. And that will allow us to be more patient with the people that are around us, the experiences that we come in contact with day to day. All right, let's settle in and we'll go into a little exploration of our relationship to patients. As you first start to settle into your formal practice, see if there's something that you tend to gravitate toward to help you anchor to the moment. Does your mind start to focus on your breath? Do you start to connect to the sensations in the body? Noticing what it is that helps you to really connect with what's happening in this moment. We can start to give ourselves a gentle reminder as we come into our practice to, to set the tone, saying to ourselves, I am here to notice what there is in my experience and to connect with it exactly as it is right now. That is my experience of mindfulness.
and we start to shift our attention to notice what is my connection to the experience of safety? The environment that I'm in feels like a safe place to go into my practice. But most importantly, connecting with yourself and knowing that you are going to make choices that are always going to support your own safety. You may start to notice as all of these things that we are working on are interconnected. So as we root down into that experience of safety, connecting to patients can become a more, more natural next step. When we feel safe, we can also wait peacefully and allow things to happen on their own time. And one of the ways that we can explore our relationship with patients is purposefully looking at the opposite. What does the other end of the spectrum look like? So we bring to mind, maybe there was an experience you had recently where you felt impatient and remembering what did that feel like in my mind? What were my thoughts? What was that experience of irritation or unrest? And what was that experience like in my body? What does impatience feel like physically? Once we have that overall picture of this is my experience of feeling impatient, then we can switch over to the other end. And start to absorb yourself in the experience of patience. And I like to think of patience. I once heard it described as the ability to wait while maintaining a good attitude. So we see what does that feel like? When we are rooted to an experience of patience, what does the landscape of the mind and our thoughts look like? And very often your thought process might be reassuring you that this is okay. And underneath that is a reminder of I'm safe. And going down and noticing what does patience feel like in your body?
that ability to wait for something while staying connected to an experience of peacefulness and maybe even a slightly positive attitude as you wait. we can start to use our technique of extending this feeling of patience toward someone else. If they need a bit more time, something came up, and they really need that experience of patience. See how that feels to extend that to someone else. And then we start to turn that around and reflect it toward ourselves. When we need a little bit more time, a bit more space, How does it feel to offer that patience to yourself? With our last couple breaths here, we will just try to soak in this experience. Just as I would try to offer patience to another person, I can also practice offering patience to myself. Seeing how you like to transition out of your practice, maybe taking a deeper breath. If the eyes were closed, slowly opening them and reconnecting with what is around you.
very much like our experience with non-judgment, there are probably no shortage of opportunities for us to practice patience within ourselves and with all of the different experiences that we interact with. I mean, anytime we leave our house, we're probably waiting at a red light or maybe stuck in traffic or, or standing in line waiting for something. So many, many experiences out there that we can recognize. So much the same way that we relate to our thoughts in meditation, where we'll have a thought and then we'll get carried away with it. We'll start to build on that thought. And next thing we know, we've traveled down with the train and we have that moment of recognition of, oh, I got carried away by my thoughts. Let me bring myself back to this moment. So we think of that as the teachable moment with our brain reconnecting to presence and we do the same thing with the attitudes of mindfulness when you're standing in line and you're irritated because you have to be somewhere else and you're running late and you start to feel that experience of impatience and the moment that you recognize that and you go oh this is my opportunity to practice patience that's what i'm doing in this moment very similar process um, and can take those you know day-to-day -day life irritations and really make them something that we can use for the process of developing these new patterns so there's your homework for this sunday all right and i think we are halfway through today it's the seventh day so halfway all right good work i will see you guys tomorrow Hi there, I'm Laura. Thanks for being here. If you enjoyed this video, make sure that you are subscribed. You can also head over to lauragyoga.com to get into our virtual yoga studio. That is our community for healing and self-development through the techniques of yoga therapy. You can join us for meditation sessions, therapeutic workshops, live yoga classes. You can check out the on-demand yoga therapy library with over 400 videos and growing every day. And you can also book a private session to work with me as a yoga therapist. You might want to check out one of these videos picked out especially for you, and I will see you in the next one.